and welcome to The Essential Six, our regular six-minute update on the UK economy and trade matters. I'm Simon Hart, Lead International Partner at RSM UK, and I'm delighted to be joined by Joe Bishwalis, Chief Economist at RSM. Hello, Joe. Good morning, Simon, or where you're at, it's good afternoon, and it's always nice to be with you guys. And I like the shirt you're wearing today. So, yes. So this is episode four of this series and we're recording it on November the 25th. Indeed, the Chancellor of the Exchequer has just made his speech on uh, spending review and we've had the Office of Budget Responsibilities report out today. So let's look, let's talk today about the UK economic forecast and the level of borrowing and spending that's been stated by the Chancellor today. So Joe, you mentioned um, to me previously that your forecast for the net reduction in the UK economy for 2020 will be something like 10.8%, which is huge, by Christmas. And today's announcement is saying it's coming in around 11, 11.3%. What are your views on that? Well, the lockdowns clearly are going to have a deleterious impact on the British economy. I don't think there's any way around this. 2020 needs to be looked at in a certain way. It's in the rear view mirror now. It's going to be the single largest contraction since the war. Given the pace of the lockdowns, even with the announcement that they're going to be eased, you know, we could be looking at 11.5%, 12% contraction in 2020. I think the way to, 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 to frame this is, yes, but you're going to have a very strong rebound next year in the range of 5.5%. Now, that's going to be rather modest compared to what's going to go on in the United States and the EU. And this does fall on the Johnson administration, who seems reluctant at the time to really hit the, the fiscal accelerator, to put forward the type of robust fiscal aid economy demands at this point. So I think that's going to be the big talking point to close out the year. And then once we get through um, the end of the year, and a vaccine uh, production and distribution schedule is in sight, we can then begin to talk about rebound and recovery. So look, 5.5% in a normal year would be fantastic growth. You, your US economy projections are because of pent up consumer demand and that spending will, will boost the economic output. Well, I'm really surprised that the UK's is as low as that. Is that is that because of Brexit as well as, you know, we've had great news on, on Oxford's uh, vaccine, why is it so low, is the question. Okay, well, it's a combination of the reluctance of, of the administration to use the fiscal tool to really boost overall economic activity. And Second, by fiscal tool, you mean borrowing, more borrowing. Yeah, yeah. This, but this, this is, is, this is, is the UK government needs to borrow money. But this is, but they've borrowed something like 394 billion in 2020 to support, you know, state interventions because of the, because of the crisis. And my friend, that's just the start. We we are at, we are at a once in 100 year shock to the British economy. It's the largest since the war, the largest since the Great Depression. And when you experience these type of episodes, there's no substitute for government borrowing to bolster overall economic activity in conjunction with the Bank of Europe, Bank of England moving its policy rate to zero, effectively to zero, right? And then there's the long shadow of Brexit, right? This hasn't gone well. You know, it's interesting. Brexit predated the election of uh, Donald Trump, and it's going to last <laughs> far longer than his administration. So the combination of those two things really are what's going to hold back uh, the British economy, which should have a much larger bounce, closer to 7 to 8% uh, in 2021. And then, you know, I think it's also important the arrival of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is a real game changer. The fact that it's got 90% efficacy um, following a, a two dose strategy, half a dose followed by a full dose. And then here's what's really important. And I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. It's superior to the American vaccine because it does not need the level of refrigeration. Yeah, that's massive, isn't it? Distribution. And as you get out up to the uh, uh, the Midlands and in the Highlands, that's critical, right? Because you can't bring everybody into the three big cities to inoculate them, right? And then there's going to be a rollover into Europe where they're going to face the same uh, problems. 
you know, here in the United States, we really turned over the uh, distribution to the United States military, who's going to have to put into field assets with respect to refrigeration that you just don't see outside of a war. So this is really going to be critical as we begin uh, 2021, but this is unmitigated good news. Yeah, it really is. No, absolutely. My, my economic theme for both the US and the UK in 2021, rebound, resilience, reimagination. And Simon and I are going to be out all over the UK in 2021 talking about this, as well as North America and the European Union. So look, the last 30 seconds, Joe, thanks for that. Uh, the last 30 seconds and okay, five and a half percent growth. That's building in Brexit negotiations actually concluding with some form of deal and the rollout of the vaccine. How much borrowing would need to take place? How much government spending would need to take place in order to get that to 7% growth? Well, I don't want to put a number on that quite yet because we're not through the depths of the pandemic. Circle back in early 2021, we'll, we'll have a number we can put at that. Once we get a sense of A, how bad the pandemic, the, the last days of the pandemic is, and then what the, the production and distribution schedules look like in 2021. Okay, Joe, time is up. Thank you very much for that. Thank you so much. And I will turn off my uh, timer because our, we've hit the six minute mark. We'll come back in early 2021 for episode five. And actually let's focus in on that, Joe. Let's focus in on what type of number is needed and what type of uh, over what period of time to make a Yeah, point. no, I'll, I'll, I'll have that. And it just, I don't want to do it right now. No, no, I understand that. Okay, great stuff. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> see you right, next we'll time. See you. Yep. All right, bye-bye.